What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie 290 Day coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And it's been a while since I've done a movie review, so I thought I would do one today uh, because there's a very important Marvel film that just came out, and that is Captain Marvel. So I'm here to answer one simple question. Uh, should you see Captain Marvel? And I think in order to talk about this movie, you also have to talk about the, quote, controversy surrounding this movie and the way that mainstream media is talking about it. And this stuff does not affect me, and it's not going to affect my review. But I have to say, if you're one of these people that expect this movie to only be a Marvel film, um, there's a lot of people out there who do not expect that. A lot of people out there feel it's way more important than that. This movie, for whatever reason, has been ghostbustered, <laughs> which sucks. I hate that it got that kind of attention, but in, in my mind, this movie is just another Marvel movie, and I'm going to treat it as just another Marvel movie in this review. If you're the kind of person that's easily triggered by female empowerment and you don't want to see that in this movie, then you're not going to want to see this movie. If you're the kind of person that thinks, oh, this is the first female-led superhero movie that ever existed you're wrong, uh, so maybe you're going to want to rush out and buy 20 tickets for the opening weekend to prove some crazy point. I'm neither of those people. I'm just somebody who wanted to see a Marvel flick. So first off, do you need to rush out and watch this movie on opening weekend? And the answer to that question is no. There are no huge spoilers that you're going to hear about this movie that will ruin the movie experience for you. You can wait and watch this film. There are some things that could get spoiled that would slightly diminish it, but there's no huge impacts or huge issues and uh, I do recommend seeing this movie before you watch Endgame at some point, because I do think it's going to introduce a few races and a few characters that are going to be important in Endgame, but you certainly don't need to rush out and see it opening weekend. You can wait till it comes on home video, which will certainly happen before and now in Endgame. So it's, it's okay to not rush out and see it now. If you already know what the phrase Cree means, and you already know what the phrase scroll means, then you probably have all of the information you need from this movie other than who Captain Marvel is. And if you're familiar with the source material, if you're familiar with the comics, or you just do a simple Wikipedia search, you'll get all of the relevant information you will need to have for Endgame. So it is possible to skip this movie altogether, though I don't know if you should. But when it comes to quality of the film, this movie is very paint by numbers for Marvel at this point. Now that we've had 20 21 Marvel Cinematic Movies. If you've ever seen one of the origin movies, it does that almost exactly to the same with a cookie cutter, um, just basic stuff here, except they really seem to leave a lot of stuff out that's super frustrating to me. For example, uh, most of the time these heroes do have a love interest. This time there is no love interest. Uh, it's replaced instead with Nothing. Uh, there's just nothing in that area. There's nothing really emotional for her to connect to other than like some friends she had on Earth, I guess. The character of Captain Marvel herself is fine. The plot is fine. It's interesting. It's got some pretty cool moments and some pretty funny moments and just some really good action scenes as well. There's definitely stuff in this movie I liked. But unfortunately, Brie Larson just seemed to be phoning it in. And I don't know if that was a script I don't know if it's her acting ability, I don't know if it was the direction she was given, but most of the time she barely utters her line with like no emotion whatsoever. And maybe that was by design, maybe they didn't want to show an emotional character with feelings, but it's kind of weird because they talk about how emotional she is throughout the entire movie, and then she never emotes. But she's not the only person that does this. Uh, Sam Jackson does a wonderful job in the movie, as Sam Jackson tends to do, but there were periods of time due to either editing or directing or just the script itself where Sam Jackson seems to be phoning it in as well. Like, did you not get a safety take on, on some of those lines? Because some of the lines that Sam Jackson delivers just fall flat and feel awkward and weird. Probably the best part of the movie for me is all the references, either references to other parts of the Marvel Universe or the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or the references to stuff that was happening in the 90s, and it does mu use music fairly well. Probably not as good as well as Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, and sometimes the music choice is a little cringy. Uh, one scene with no doubt in particular, I think, has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, but for the most part, I, that part of the movie was good. It, it was kind of fun and kind of enjoyable in that regard. And yes, uh, there is a certain amount of progressiveness to this movie. Sometimes it's really on the nose, which can be a little frustrating. Um, but sometimes it's just a general overall good message about, for example, how difficult it was probably was to be a woman in the Air Force back in the 90s. So stuff like that, I certainly i am not triggered by. It doesn't upset me. It might upset you. And, and if, you do, if it does, you probably want to avoid this film. Is this a particularly good Marvel film, though? Uh, no, it's certainly not as good as some of my favorite ones, like uh, Doctor Strange or Spider-Man Homecoming or uh, the uh, Civil War or any of those really, really good Marvel films that I put near the top. 
And it's probably not the worst Marvel film either. It's certainly better than Thor 1 and 2. Is it as good as, say, uh, Black Panther or Thor 3? No, it's probably somewhere in between Thor 2 and Thor 3. So to give this movie a score, which is something I don't normally do for movie reviews to give you an idea where it lands in the hierarchy, if uh, at the very bottom of the list, movie number 21 is the second Thor, and the very top of the list uh, is, let's say, Infinity War, then I would probably put Captain Marvel somewhere around number 10, or I guess on a scale from 1 to 10, it's probably a 5 out of 10. It's just, it's just okay. Now that's how I feel after walking out of the film, having watched it just one time. I tend to watch Marvel movies several times. I don't really feel a desire to go back to this one, so I, I don't know how I'll feel upon a second watch, because that's definitely going to be a home on home video, probably for free, and probably quite some time from now. But there's definitely one thing you can't argue with. Uh, this movie has been heavily politicized. In fact, since this is not a purely positive review of this movie, there's a real chance YouTube is going to bury it. And if you don't like that kind of pol politicized stuff, if you don't like this stupid, stupid culture war we're in, I fully understand why you would skip this movie, wait for home video, and try to watch it for free or cheaper. And yeah, I too hate how politicized Marvel films have become, specifically this one. And I don't even really fault Disney. I do think it has part to do with Brie Larson, but I think it more has to do with the people who watch these films and the people who review these films and the people that criticize these films and the people who prop these films up. Because this film is not a train wreck. It's not SJW propaganda. It's nothing like that. Though it does have a few empowerment moments in it, I don't think it ruins the film. And likewise, it's certainly not the first example of a female superhero or the first example of a female lead in a movie, and it shouldn't be celebrated as such. It should just be treated like another Marvel film. That's how I plan to treat it, and I hope that's how you plan to treat it too. I wish everybody else would do the same. It's one of those movies that a lot of people are going out of their way to hate and brigade online, and a lot of reviewers and critics are going out of their way to give it a higher rating than it probably deserves, and I just can't believe that's what movies have become. Yet here we are. But you know me, always trying to ignore that stupid culture war and never pay attention to it, and that's why I wanted to post this review, just a review of another Marvel film, and as far as other Marvel films go, this is somewhere in the bottom half. When you watch those 21 films, it's certainly one you could probably afford to skip. I don't think it's very important. Brie Larson ultimately phones it in, and arguably, in the marketing and inside the movie itself, is the worst part of the film. It's still pretty watchable, though. Though I do highly recommend seeing this before we watch Endgame because a lot of the elements that are in this film, including Captain Marvel herself, will be in that film. So you probably want to watch it on home video, watch it on some streaming site, rent it at Redbox for a dollar, or whatever. Uh, you probably want to see it. Now that's just one man's opinion. I could be wrong, and I know... Ooh, I know a lot of people are going to in the comments section below and probably on Reddit and everywhere else. And because YouTube is likely to bury this review because they're only looking for positive portrayals and positive reviews of this movie, do me a favor, share this on your social media, drop a like on it, hit subscribe on the channel if you want to see more movie reviews in the future, hit notifications if you want to see all of my gaming news, my personal videos, my movie reviews, and things like that in the future. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much and I'll speak with you again soon. In before Marvel copyrights this because I use part of their trailer footage.